This is Operation Titanium Tank, the first ever community EVM campaign that was playable on February of 2018 before ending in August. Titanium Tank was a pretty big deal at the time. It was the first event where the medals were available to anyone that completed the tour, not just the content creators themselves. Pretty nice, and it's something that every new campaign event continues to offer to this day. But what was in this operation? Well, there were 6 advanced missions on 6 community made maps. This was out of the other 62 missions that were submitted for their contest, and these missions were judged and rated by the event organizers themselves named Hydrogen. Basically, only a single person rated these missions. Yeah, if you can't tell, Potato used to operate their campaigns differently back then. Regardless, I've decided to visit these old missions on their archive servers and document my experience playing through them. We're gonna see if these 6 to 7 year old missions can hold up to today's standards. We're gonna start from the bottom at 6th place with Power Palliative. Now this mission was actually tied with another one called Evil Eye, which was also submitted for Titanium Tank. But Power Palliative made it in simply because the tester style was better. We are gonna see if that holds true. Right off the bat, we can see that the mission likes to use custom made robots, such as the giant golf club demo knights and lock and load demos. There's plenty more custom bots to be seen throughout the mission, but I won't bore you too much with the details. But definitely the most annoying thing about this mission were the banner soldiers. Near the end of the first wave, these battalion soldiers were paired with demos using the charging charge stacking damage resistances together, and the mission will continue to use banner soldiers throughout the waves, cycling between the three types of banners. I mean seriously, they use buff banner soldiers as supports two times in a row for the next two waves. Thankfully the bots from waves 2 and 3 weren't so bad to fight against. That being said, both waves use bowmen and buff banner soldiers together in one subwave, with wave 3 having their arrows penetrate through players. There were also vaccinator medics with giants beginning on wave 3, with their own respective damage types that they deal. Then at the end, three types of vaccinator medics supported the giant demos. They definitely caught us by surprise, but not particularly wave ending for us. Wave 4 had super scouts at the beginning, and unfortunately they were able to drop the bomb on top of the hatch. This wave was using a large variety of common bots, both as the main set as well as being supports. Though there were a few bots that I found rather questionable, like the Contra soldiers with the medic. They slowly spawned in after another, and it was rather hard to see their buffs have a significant impact for the other bots. Then there's also the deflector pusher heavies. Their knockback effect is relatively unnoticeable, and after I died to them once, I never got to see another one again. They did did use shield medics with the demos at the end, but for whatever reason allowed them to use their quick fix supercharge. Not really a fan of a medic bot that can do both things at once. Wave 5 is a bit more simpler at this time, with many heavy bots and double the amount of tanks. The rest of Wave 5 is alright for the most part. Again, there's a few bots here that are underused with not much identity, like these samurai demos only appearing 4 times, and I find these heavies with shield medics not having that much pushing power. The wave ends with a tank and a few more steel gauntlets and burst fire demos. Kind of a boring ending. Also, you guys should know that this is the only wave that does not have a banner soldier. Better enjoy it while it lasts. As we get to wave 6, the mission unfortunately declines in quality. First, we are introduced to the chief deflector heavy that deals knockback to players. No issues here. However, the soldiers here are providing a mini crit boost for the heavy and pyros. This is a problem because their icon does not properly indicate that they have the buff banner, only the fact that they have the direct hit. And you should know how strong a buff banner can be when it comes to buffing a lot of robots. Not a great case of icon usage. Then there's also the colonel barrages that come after the chief heavy dies. And for some reason, the first two do not have a crit boost despite what their icon indicates. This is something you should only see in a one wave mission like Collision Escaper. Rest of the wave, again, went pretty okay. And the wave ends with giant jumping sandmans and deflector heavies. The final wave is full of crit boosted bots and starts with more jumping sandmans and deflector heavies seen earlier. And just like with the barrages from before, we see that the flare pyros here do not have a crit boost like their icon is supposed to indicate. For some reason, they still gave the direct hit soldiers their buff banners here. It's pretty useless when the rest of the bots are crit boosted. The giant burst fire soldier had medics that matched the popular uber. Unfortunately, they still pushed through nothing. At the end, they spawned the other types of banner soldiers along with the final chief demo named Landmine Disposer. They spam a shit ton of bombs with the iron bomber, but have a very long reload time for us to take advantage of. A little troublesome to deal with, but I have no issues with this boss. For the most part, this mission provided a mediocre experience. There has been plenty of custom bots used throughout the mission, and some have gave the earlier waves their own identity, though the use of custom bots have slowly become muddied over time. Personally, I was not a fan of the mission constantly overusing banner soldiers, and the buff banners are not only the most overused banner in this mission, but has become redundant, especially with the last wave. I don't think Power Palliative can live up to today's standards. If I had to rate this mission now, it would most certainly belong in D tier. 
Now, moving on to fifth place, we have Program Seppuku. Now, let me just say that after playing through this mission, it really makes Power Palliative look like S tier in comparison. The large groups of scouts in the beginning completely wiped us out at the front. Then there were also these mini giant fist heavies that were far too numerous and have so much health at about 700 HP. After we killed the giant soldiers and the fist heavies, the two giant fan scouts spawned in after another. This took way too long to beat the first wave and had completely awful pacing. I suppose it's because of the map. Wave 2 for the most part is pretty simple, but in my opinion, it's way too simple and easy. Especially Especially after the first wave. There's only two types of robots used per subwave here, and it becomes really empty towards the end. Wave 3 had more interesting bots here, such as burst fire downwards and the giant heater heavies in the beginning. They use another custom bot here, which is a mini giant soldier. Now, before you say anything, yes. For whatever reason, the soldier does not shoot in burst fire like their icon normally indicates. Looking into them further, they're supposed to shoot 10% faster, have 4 extra rockets to shoot with, and have a vision range of 400 hammer units. Yeah, it's a really strangely designed bot if I've ever seen one. Unfortunately, the rest of Wave 3 went pretty badly. The excessive amount of samurai demos pushed us back to the hash, and the engineer bot set up way too late for the next giant heavy to spawn in, so it took quite a long time to end this wave. Wave 4 continues with the mini giant fodder. There are these demonites and lock and load demos with the charge and charge, and with the latter comes the giant banner soldiers, the first two of which have the battalion's backup, giving damage resistance to the already tanky demo bots, and the next two having the conjurer while also pocketed by two giant medics per pair. These giants took way too long to get through. It took the entire half of the map just to kill a single medic, coupled with the fact that half of my team were being killed on the front, leading the bots away from the bomb carrier. We finally managed to stop these giants near the bridge at our hatch. The same goes for the second pairing. For Wave 5, actually it's better if you guys see this for yourselves. Yeah, this wave started with exploding gas pyros having such a unique name, the Fun Upgrade Pyro. Now, from my understanding, Potato used to allow players to buy the Exploding Ignite upgrade for the gas passer. Pretty crazy. I can imagine that the starting subwave would have made a lot more sense back then. But we're in the year 2024, and the Exploding Ignite has been banned on Potato for reasons I'm sure people already know about. So, the supposed joke that the subwave held has been lost to time. This part was still pretty bullshit though. Everything else after pales in comparison. The black box soldiers with Uber medics were boring to fight against, and the giant head heavies with vaccinator mechs were somewhat challenging, but they were definitely not as strong as the gas pyros. Wave 6 spawns every mini giant used throughout the mission, which probably means the wave is building up to something big. There were two tanks that spawned this wave going through both sides, but one of them got destroyed by the train, which definitely saved us plenty of time on tank busting. After we killed every mini giant, the streets were completely empty and dead. Then we killed the last few giants with the respective medics, and after that, they sent in the final tank that actually has 6 sentries. There's two level 3 sentries on top that are actually indestructible. You actually can't destroy these things. You could probably infer that this tank is definitely unfair to pyro players. The sheer knockback of these sentries couldn't allow me to deal sufficient damage to the tank as a scout. I bet that without our soldier and two devil players, we would not have been able to destroy this thing in time. Wave 7 is the last wave, and aside from having to deal with 3 types of banner supports, there are 2 bosses to kill. The first is this chief uber medic named Not The Mission Maker Medic, one of the names of all time. Next, we have to kill the brass beast heavy named Dragonborn Heavy. Yeah, I gotta say, this wave was just honestly really boring, and dragged out the mission far longer than it should, which the mission was completed in about 40 minutes. I should say that this mission is definitely horrible. It certainly feels like the mission was not properly tested past the first half of the map, because the pacing gets extremely bad here. The mission constantly uses mini giants which makes the mission extremely tedious to get through. Seriously, these guys have about 600 to 800 health each and there were a lot spammed per wave. I guess they assumed you were supposed to run this with a heavy and crits medic combo, but man, this mission seriously drags without them. And let's not forget about wave 5. Going through it now, it gave a pretty horrible experience. I bet that if this mission was submitted today, it definitely would have been striked. Out of all the titanium tank missions, this has definitely aged for the worst. Looking at it today, I think Program Seppuku is an F tier mission. Now, a quick update while I was working on this video. A while after posting the playthrough on my channel, the original creator left a comment about the development of Program Seppuku. They left some important insight, of which I'll summarize. Basically, around the time of the Mappers vs Machines contest, they, among a small amount of people, were frustrated with the results from an expert mission on Tyan. Yet, others praised the mission for its insane difficulty. The map maker of Tyan was also dominant in the contest, which made the creator really unhappy at the time. When Titanium Tank started accepting missions, the creator wanted to make a mission for Tyan that was decent enough for players to enjoy. He also 
pointed out that the mission was mostly tested in the front of the map, and that they tried fixing the pacing with engineer bots, but it didn't work out in the end. For the beginning of Wave 5, they said it was originally intended as a joke, but also pointed their frustration with Valve for allowing improperly balanced changes like the Explode on Ignite upgrade. It's a very long read, but it definitely gives a new perspective to the story behind this mission. It also made me recognize that, no matter how much we dislike the missions for being the way that they are sometimes, we should never forget that there was at least some passion and dedication put behind them. We're gonna move on up to 4th place, with this mission called Peak Performance. One of my teammates noted that this mission was using random choice for some of their bots. Basically, they randomly choose from a selection of bots to spawn in. These brass beast heavies, for example. You can see that their eye colors are different from one another. In this case, blue eyes means they're normal AI, and yellow eyes means they're a hard AI. These heavies died pretty quick, but it's likely we're gonna be seeing more examples later down the line. The giant heavy with uber medics didn't push up too far, and they were far more weaker compared to these warrior spirit heavies with crits. It was pretty funny seeing my team suck ass at dealing with these bots. It's too bad that the tank took my attention away. This thing had way too much health for the first wave of the mission. Wave 2 uses random choice again with the scouts having either scatter guns or first natures. The giant buff banner soldier came in pretty late, but for some reason this one was rapidly firing rockets. Their icon didn't properly represent this fact. The giant contra soldiers that came next did have the correct icon, but they forgot to actually change their name. There were two types of giant powers using the flamethrower and the dragon's fury, while also having shield medics. And after they died, the crit boosted short Stop scout spawned at the end. This wave was really falling off after the later half. This ending was just so weird and just had awful pacing. Wave 3 had pyros using random choice with varying levels of bot difficulty. Some of them were expert AI with the Dragon's Fury. There were 8 burst fire downwards with crits that spawned later. I did die to one of them, but it feels like they didn't push through much here, as well as these giant demo and medic pair that came after. There were 2 tanks that spawned with heavies. For some reason, the heavies here were not random choice, so you just have 10 heavies of each type coming after another. Like with the rest of the bot, they died quickly and added nothing. There was at least some challenge at the end, with the giant burst fire demo and soldier each pocketed with the giant crits medic. These bots were different from the typical giants. They didn't have their clip size extended, so they always shot for projectiles per burst. Both of them were killed much faster than the tank, and it made for a rather boring ending. Wave 4 started with burst soldiers pocketed by uber medics. Even with the giant bowmen with banner soldiers, there was no challenge here and personally made me want to fall asleep. Another strange bot that I've noticed was this brass beast heavy that stood behind the back line. I'm not sure that giving them sniper AI was a solid choice. They're way back here dealing basically zero damage to our team. If I had to guess, they were there to deal with spy players, but this looks extremely dumb to anyone else. There were 72 demonites that spawned with the last tank of the mission. It's disappointing that these demonites were only Persian Persuader demos, especially with their icon. I was expecting at least a couple of demonites using the Eyelander or the Skull Cutter. Then at the end, there were giant heavies with Mad Milk and Buff Banner support. It definitely felt weird saving those supports up until the last moment. Maybe the giant heavies were just too easy to kill. Wave 5 started with giant scouts, but they were armored, did extra damage, and penetrates through players. They could have changed up their icon, but regardless, they all died pretty quick. The sniper bots this time were direct hit soldiers with crits. Once again, these kinds of bots do literally nothing for the wave. There's also two groups of crit boosted demos, the first group being regular and the next being burst fire. They were relatively short lived. Yeah, there's not really much I can speak about the second half of the wave. The next few giants did not prove much of a challenge. Fortunately for wave 6, they do shake things up a bit. It. First, there is a boss that spawns right away, which is this flaming pyro with a massively long flamethrower range. Unfortunately, they were completely trivialized by our heavy and medic combo, blocking them from moving forward. The heater heavies and flare pyros that came with didn't provide much assistance at all. Next were the crit boosted pyros with uber medics using only the dragon's fury. Just like the demonites, they weren't random choice, so they're not using the proper icon. Disappointing to say the least. Also, there's contra soldiers that spawn infrequently. To be honest, I completely forgot that they existed in this wave. The ending mostly consisted of giants. They were the burst fire soldiers that spawned up top, and then there were the deflector heavies with the shield medic on the left. This subwave completely crumbled against our spy, so it was a very unsatisfying finale. Overall, this mission was pretty bad. Granted, we did run a heavy medic combo and a spy for the session, but jeez, I didn't know the mission would come this easy and boring. They were a bit experimental with this random choice bots, but for whatever reason, they completely stopped using it past the first part of wave 3. I was really looking forward to more bots that were randomized. The subwaves were also going pretty fast, and it's really hard for me to identify which part stood out the most. I'm honestly disappointed with this mission. Peak performance certainly doesn't live up to its title today, and with today's standards, I'm gonna say D tier for this one. With all that said and done, I have a 
another piece of backstory to share, coming directly from the creator of Peak Performance themselves. From what they remember, they said this mission was actually the hardest out of the six missions when Titanium Tank first released. Over time, the mission was nerfed, including toning down the support bots and changing a few other bots like the giant medics on Wave 5. I did mention that the mini boss being random choice was a gimmick, however, that was a misinterpretation. They simply stated that it was just a way of writing their pop files. Later, they explained that the boss on Wave 6 was an experimentation on flamethrower attributes added in Jungle Inferno. The boss used to be more impactful and popular until the Blue Moon update, which introduced flamethrower damage ramp up, severely reducing the damage they dealt before. The mission hasn't been changed after the update, and they've agreed the gimmick is heavily outdated now. After reading their comment, it definitely paints a clearer picture as to how peak performance became what it is now. It makes me wonder if the titanium tank missions used to be a lot more worse back then, or maybe they were a lot more better on release day. But for now at least, we're looking at their finalized versions that we have today. Moving on to third place, we have Entertainer's Entourage. Now, first, I want to compliment this mission for making itself stand out among the rest. Every single robot here has unique cosmetics, and their names haven't changed up. Even each wave has their own respective themes. Wave 3, for example, has a sports vibe, and Wave 6 has a winter holiday theme. If you've ever seen missions as of late that do the same idea, you can probably thank this one. But let's see how the waves of the mission can hold up to today. The first wave introduces us to Gate Boss that will draw part of our team's attention away from the main wave. For the most part, the robots here provided a reasonable challenge for an introduction wave, and actually managed to capture the first gate. The ending of this wave seemed to have stragglers at the end, which took a while to finish this wave. The second wave had shotgun heavies carrying the bomb, and a squad of gatebot soldiers carrying the conch and battalions back up. It's a bit much to stack 5 soldiers on top of each other with speed and damage resistance, but not much of a problem. But after that, the wave really stagnates. The tank moves slowly through the main area as a giant deflector heavy attempts to capture the gate going left. The bottle demos were mostly just an excuse for players to keep an eye on the bomb, and the wave continues to decline as shotgun heavy with Ubermedics try to push through. It's a really weak ending, and mostly just wasted our time. The third wave sends six giant Sandmans, with half of them trying to capture the gate. The demos and bog scouts pushed us back a bit, having us hold down this choke for the rest of the wave. This entryway has certainly gave these bots the most difficult time in trying to push through. Our sentry even blocks off this giant soldier here from moving through entirely. It had to take a sentry buster to blow it up, just so the soldier can finally go forward. Not like they got too far. The fourth wave has a bunch of crits medics supporting the bots, including these soldiers and the giant shotgun heavies that actually shoots rockets. There are also the giant demos with shield medics, one of them managing to push through and dropping the bomb at this first gate. The last giant of this wave is actually a boss, a flare pyro named the Ancient Chief Pyro. I have to say that this bot was designed rather poorly. It's supposed to heal itself while burning players, but it's not a lot that it will allow this Chief Pyro to last more than 15 seconds on the field. Wave 5 isn't too great. It has plenty of giant crossbow mechs and bowman snipers, but I find having melee-centric boss like this giant demo knight and the bear heavy really weak at this point of the mission. The tank didn't take much time to destroy, and once again, the bots were not able to get past their sentry blocking the entryway. Moving on to wave 6, the only gate bots here were the two mini giant supports being a pyro and a buff banner black box soldier. The first part of the wave had loose cannon demos, giant burst fire demos, and super scouts that pushed us all back to this choke point. It was quite impenetrable for a while until the giant soldier showed up with crits. The second one got through after our sentry gun got destroyed, but we killed it a short while after, and as a result, we had 7 stragglers to search for. These deflectors have a really strange name tag, Come Urgently Heavy? What does that even mean? Wave 7 is the final wave, and to beat this mission, we have to kill a boss duo including a giant heavy named Brandy Rockets that has a minigun shooting, well, rockets, and a super scout named Pinchy Pally. I have to say that this was a really clever boss wave. The scout acts as a bodyguard for the heavy and chases players that get too close. I guess that's why the scout has more health than the heavy, and after the scout dies, the heavy becomes pretty weak. I'm actually okay with this. It made the mission very satisfying to complete. My only few complaints were that the spies spawned in pretty big clusters, which were really annoying, and that the engineer supports were barely able to set up the sentries. Overall, this mission was relatively decent. I can certainly praise the mission maker for their effort on adding flavor to the bots. I also think the finale was particularly done well, especially given what limited tools they had at the time. However, I feel that this mission was a bit lacking for what I expect from an advanced difficulty. The mission was kind of boring to get through up until the end. The first wave did provide a bit of challenge, but after that, the rest of the waves were not able to push past the first area that much. I also don't think this mission has an answer for pushing past this entryway. In most cases, only a sentry buster would have been able to destroy our sentry here. Regardless, Entertainer Sensorage has certainly aged better compared to the others, but not by a lot. It's a C-tier mission by today's standards, to say the least. 
Next in second place, we have Watershed Waylay. And right away, we can see that the mission uses a sheer variety of common bots with very few giants on the first wave. The bots in the beginning weren't too oppressive, most of them were melee focused and provided a decent challenge. Thankfully, the bomb can reset in this map. Unfortunately, near the end, the giant power was pushed forward with their ubers and scattered us away. They deployed the bomb and caused us to lose the wave. The next time around, the path switched over to the outside area, and this wave becomes significantly easier. Not only because we learned from last time, but there was enough space for us to kill the medics earlier. The next wave introduces us to what are called caustic robots. Basically, the boss with his green glowing unusual effect dealt less damage, but they inflict bleeding for 10 seconds. It's quite a bit of damage over time, but it can be cleansed if you step into the map's water pools. They're in many places around the map, so you don't have to look too far. It's quite a nice gimmick. However, I found that you can just ignore this if you have plenty of healing sources like the Medic, Heal on Kill, and the Mad Milk. As a result, the effect is pretty much trivialized and mostly becomes an annoying on-screen effect. Other than that, the rest of Wave 2 didn't really stand out to me. They did send one tank at the end, but there were barely any bots to support it. The third wave is, again, full of common bots and very few giants. The only caustic bots I've seen were the Bat Scouts in the second quarter and the regular soldiers in the giant heavy squad at the end. I was expecting more. It's also kind of disappointing because both of the bots didn't add or make a significant impact to the wave. However, the biggest gripe I have with this wave were the 16 heavies with blast and bullet vaccinator medics. On top of the medics providing 100% resistance of the respective type, they also had an extremely high healing rate. I only figured this out when I realized the heavies were not dying as they should. Thankfully, I had bullet penetration to kill the medics behind them, but these bots were not that fun to play against and pushed us back farther than expected. Wave 4 had an okay beginning. At least there's more caustic robots to see, such as the caustic soldiers paired with battalion soldiers, there were the caustic snipers that were honestly annoying, and the giant battalion soldiers near the end with the caustic rocket launcher. Though the crit boosted Tommy Slav heavies that came with them were too much I'd say. Their range and accuracy killed all of us out in the front, and coupled with the damage resist, they made for a pretty big difficulty spike. Wave 5 has steel gauntlets with the caustic effect, some giant jumping salmon scouts, and more crit boosted conch soldiers. The giant burst fire demos here are also caustic. Sad to say they didn't push through our defenses much. The giant crit boosted heavies near the end were squatted with battalion soldiers and flaming pyros. We killed every one of these squads at range without them ever making an impact. The tank was the last team to beat this wave. Unfortunately, the boss that came to support it were nothing to write home about. Getting some deja vu here. Wave 6 is the last wave, and for once, the wave composition changes. There were two tanks to destroy, and alongside is a chief battalion soldier named Public Chief of Staff that is also pocketed by two giant bullet and blast vaccinator medics. Not gonna lie, it's a disappointment that the final boss has a battalion's backup. All the battalion's backup really does here is nullify crit damage making the crits creek and any other mini crit sources useless. After this boss, we have to destroy the last tank of the mission. I understand they try to split the team here, but I'd rather have this wave ended with the soldier instead. Overall, this mission was pretty alright. It did certainly provide a bigger challenge compared to the other missions that we covered before. Unfortunately, there are some pretty clear flaws here. The waves were very formulaic. You always start by dealing with a myriad of common bots at the beginning. Then towards the halfway mark, the first set of giants spawn in, and near the end, the second or last set of giants spawn in squads, either having medics or any bot that provide a buff of some kind. They do change it up a bit by adding a tank or an extra set of giants on some waves, and there's also different types of bots as well, but these moments are few and far between, and the formula itself does not change. The caustic effect was an interesting gimmick, but after the second wave, it stopped being significant. There were also some big difficulty spikes on waves 3 and 4, and the final wave wasn't really all that great. But despite all the flaws, I think it still aged well compared to the rest of the missions in this lineup. Just like with Entertainer's Entourage, I believe Watershed Waylay could be a C tier mission mission today. And finally, we have our first place mission in Titanium Tank called Spyware Shipping. This is our last mission to cover for this tour, and hopefully it was worth the journey. The mission starts with giant fan scouts, which were alright so far. But then immediately, we have our first difficulty spike. There are these buff banner soldiers paired with Tomislav heavies coming from both sides of the front and just completely wiped us out. Looking at them closely, these heavies are buffed with 50% more accuracy and have expert AI. That basically means the heavies here have aimbot, and coupled with the mini crit boost, they basically lock down the entire first area of the map. This is a really terrible introduction to this so-called advanced mission, because after this, the wave becomes significantly easier. Wave 2 has a bunch of bong scouts and demos in the beginning, and as soon as most of them die, we have our first tank of the mission. Only, instead of spawning at the front, it teleports in near the first gate behind this garage door. Luckily, this team was already experienced with the mission, so the tank was handled with no issues. There's more giant fan scouts to kill, and Contra soldiers 
pair with trip boosted pyros. We didn't have a soldier for them to reflect projectiles, and because they couldn't separate from the soldier bots, they couldn't take up much space. There was more fan scouts and another type of giant soldier at the end. They spawned two on both sides, and each one had either a crit or a uber medic. It's nice to see a bit of change at the very least. Wave 3 has Tommy Sloth heavies from before, but this time as giants. They didn't have the buff banner soldiers this time around, and man, even with the uber medics and milk scouts, these giants were definitely easier than their wave 1 counterparts. Later, the mission does a teleporting gimmick again. They silently open up the gate behind us before spawning ambushing scouts and pyros here. They're indicated by their icons having a teleporter in them. Wait, is that the devil's number on the wave bar? Next, there were some giant burst soldiers with battalion soldiers and steel gauntlets. Then at the end, there was a crit boosted chrono barrage paired with the giant shield medic. Again, this is another huge spike in difficulty. The slow moving rockets really gave us a difficult time trying to get around the medic's shield. Four of us died while trying to kill it. But luckily, our heavy snuck behind the soldier and separated the medic away. The soldier was isolated and became significantly easier to deal with. I imagine this would have gone worse were it not for a heavy's genius plan. Wave 4 has a large variety of common bots here. The giant black box soldiers with uber medics were pretty trivial, and the burst fire demos couldn't provide much help. Next were crit boosted fury pyros with shield medics pushing us pretty far back from the first area. Then there were the gas passer pyros that slowed down players, affecting mobility classes like the scout and spy the most. This was the most annoying and tedious part to get through. These main robots were designated to capturing the gate. Only the supporting fury pyro was the bomb carrier here. At the end, we see giant armored salmon scouts with quick fix popping medics and squatted soldiers. Their speed didn't quite match with the giant scouts and ended up as stragglers. Wave 5 introduces a giant battalion soldier pocketed by a giant medic. Let me tell you, this soldier was completely bullshit. Their icon is lying to you in that they are actually a giant burst fire battalion soldier. It's a horrible case of improper icon usage. The rest of the bots here were a complete joke. There's only 4 pairs of contra soldiers with flare gun heavies, both of which basically did zero damage and contributed nothing as soon as the giant soldier died. In this run, one of the giant burst fire down was completely ignored the original bomb path. Instead, they decided to go through the shortcut where the front upgrade station room is cutting straight through us. That was honestly a pretty bullshit moment, but around this time, the potato servers were recovering from the 64-bit update that broke a few things. I'm gonna let this moment slide and not count it against the mission. There's still more to see on wave 5. They use gas passer powers again, but now, in addition to the slowdown effect they had before, they also have the explode on ignite upgrade. Yeah, this was a really horrible bot to fight in this wave. There was a tank and some giant deflectors with uber medics in the end, but quite honestly, the gas pyros were much stronger than these giants. Wave 6 is the final wave, and yeah, I didn't mention this with the previous wave bar, but I find it really weird that there's duplicate icons between the main and support bots. There's a pretty impressive gimmick coming up, but first, we have to kill these bots that are very obvious obviously here as filler. This big boy here is named Dockyard Mortar Monstrosity. You actually can't damage this thing at all since they're inside the spawn area, and as the name implies, they shoot bombs that insta kill players across the map. As ambitious as this boss was back then, there are some very clear flaws. Obviously this thing is quite tall, in fact they're so tall that their bombs hit the ceiling and messes up their original trajectory. This can lead to issues where you can just get killed randomly by it, plus the bombs here have a much shorter fuse time than you would expect. As soon as they land on the ground, it's about 1 second away before they explode. Last Lastly, there's also no firing sound coming from this titan, so you do have to keep a constant eye on them, just so you don't randomly die. Anyway, we're almost done with this mission. Along with the titan, they sent plenty of common bots and giants that we've already seen before. Most of them are running a crit boost. In the last quarter of the wave, they sent one final tank that did actually manage to capture the gate here. Once again, they used the giant battalion soldiers that secretly shoots in burst fire. The first two came with giant burst fire demos, and the third came with the giant dragon fury pyro. As a singular spawn, I was expecting this pyro to be a boss, but they were just any ordinary giants. At least the end they remained serviceable enough. For being the first place mission in Titanium Tanks contest, I have to say that this mission certainly wasn't the greatest. The mission was trying to be challenging, which I don't personally mind for an advance, but they certainly went overboard in some areas. I can compliment the mission for trying new ideas, like the ambushing robots and the teleporting tank. The Dockyard Mortar Monstrosity on Wave 6 was definitely a robot of its time, and I'm sure a few missions in the past few years have certainly drawn from this idea. But generally speaking, some of the custom bots were annoying and tedious to fight against, and made a few waves unenjoyable at times. I think when you compare this to the missions that we have now, I think Spyware Shipping is a bit of a D-tier mission. 
And there you have it, every mission reviewed and titanium tank. Unfortunately, I don't have the original 2017 medal, but I do own the 2020 replica of it, so I guess that counts? But yeah, as we've seen, these missions have definitely been made back in the days when there really hasn't been a coherent set of standards. All the stuff that they took inspiration from were mostly from Valve missions. There were probably missions from Iron Gauntlet or Mappers vs Machines that they also had. Maybe I've been a little too harsh about rating these 67 year old missions to what we have now, but after playing through them, a majority of the missions here had certainly aged like milk. I'm pretty sure they would not have held up to the standards Potato has nowadays. Still, it was nice visiting some old relics of the past. Subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, or if not, leave a comment below telling me how I can improve.